Are you tired of raid guides where the content creator will not get to the point or that are missing critical details that are causing your team to wipe or not be able to complete mechanics? In this guide, you're not only going to learn about the Vault of Glass encounters as quickly as possible, but you're also going to learn from all the experience I've had running myself and sherping other people through that. Hi, I'm Part-Time Guardian, and if you're new to this channel and you like other content like this, where you learn how to be a better guardian, become better at Destiny in your part-time, Feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel to get other great content like this. So first off, when you first spawn in, you'll notice you're in this big open area, which is, you know, unusual for some raids. You're going to want to get as quickly as possible towards the front of the arena where you're at. You'll notice that there's an area that it's kind of divided into the right, left, and middle. There are plates in each of these areas that you have to hold to build a spire. You'll see a spire that's building in the center of the screen. On those three plates, there are going to be a number of ads that come out of doors and other areas that are going to be trying to come to your plates. You need to take those out. Most importantly, they're void minotaurs. Those will actually disrupt your ability to keep the plate. Swords, other things work nice, but again, they're void, so keep that in mind when you're trying to use things to match their burn to take them out quickly. There's also going to be Cyclops that show up at random moments at each of the plates. You're going to want to use things like supers, linears, rockets, things that take things down very quickly to finish them up because they can kind of screw up your runs and they can shoot across maps. So even though maybe you took yours down on your side, the other person didn't. So again, take the three plates, divide up into three groups of two. That's what we usually do. And just do this for a period of time and eventually the spire will grow. And usually if you're good at it, it takes about four or five minutes. You get your loot and you'll be on to the next encounter. The next encounter is Confluxes. So you'll actually do three different encounters in this room. So get used to it. Again, there's a middle, left, and right area that is around a central area where the Templar will show up over time. What we do in the Conflux encounter is we take two people per uh, Conflux. There's going to be a Conflux that shows up again in the three areas. And as before, you're going to have a lot of ads that show up, so you need to kill them. So again, add clearing supers, add clearing weapons work really well here. Wither Horde works well. Anything that you're used to using to clear out ads. The reason that you're trying to keep all of the ads off the Confluxes is if they get to the Confluxes and sacrifice, they will wipe your entire team. There's also Fanatics. The Fanatics are the Vex that don't have heads that will start coming towards you. And if they die, they drop a green goo. Don't sh uh, hit that green goo. If you get that green goo, you'll get a debuff. And then on a regular rotation, the Templar will do a negation ritual, which will basically kill you if you have that. If you do have that, just go down to the center. There's a pool there where you can actually get that cleansed off of you. There are also overload champions, so make sure you have weapons to deal with that. And then finally, through several parts of the encounter, you're going to have wyverns that show up on each towards each plate and those will definitely come after the conflexes so you'll again you'll need supers rockets things like that to take those down fairly quickly again do this for several cycles and you finish that encounter the next encounter is oracles and in this encounter you're gonna have a lot of ads that show up you're also gonna have snipers that look over you from the overhang areas now for those when we were doing this initially early on we were using xenophage it's not, you're not, you're more powerful now, so you can probably use snipers or scout rifles, but again, and you can have designated people who kind of focus on that. But in this encounter, we're not going to divide up into groups, and I'll kind of explain why. The confluxes are gone, so really all you have to do is clear ads, but you have to shoot these things called oracles. The oracles will show up in different areas of the room. I'm going to show on the screen uh, what we use as callouts. And if you look at the locations, there's basically, if you think of um, one, one is going to be towards where you first came into the room. Three is going to be towards where the Templar is in the back. So on the right, you have R1, R2, R3. On the left, you have L1, L2, and L3. And then you have a middle area. They, there are oracles that will light up and emit a tone as they do that. Generally, to cover these oracles, you can actually hit every or There's a couple places you can actually hit every oracle on the map. So you could actually have one person do all of this. But if you want to learn the encounter, what you can generally do is, unless you get overwhelmed, the, the person on the left can probably cover L1, L2, and mid fairly easily. Those are fairly easy to see from each other. Then you can have someone cover L3 and R3 because they're across from each other, just in that center area. That can cover those pretty quickly. And then you can have another person do R1 and R2 and cover those. Again, you don't have to use these. Those are just pretty easy. And I would say your person who does, if you do the three, does mid L1, L2, probably have that person be your most experienced person because they will have to move a little bit, but those are fairly easy to cover 
with someone who's done this a few times. Now, one of the things you have to keep in mind is that while you're shooting the oracles, you won't have as much time to be killing ads. So you'll want to have a buddy kind of paired up with you. So again, you don't really be split into teams, but just kind of have people in the general area so they can help out with killing ads. Again, things like Wither Horde work well, blinding grenade launchers. Um, for taking out the oracles, you're probably gonna want a shotgun or a fusion rifle, something that's really impactful. You could use NFH because it actually works well against the oracles and it works well against the snipers. The only problem you're gonna have there is ammo. So you just have to keep that in mind. So again, you're going to see the oracles light up and emit a tone. So let's say it's one of the ones near you. You see that, okay, you know that one's first, okay? Then one's gonna show up in another area with another person. That's the second one. And then a third person will see, and it could be you. You might see one, again, it won't be the same one, but it could be another one you're covering if you're covering multiple. So that will be basically that set of three. So one will light up, have a tone, second, third. What you're gonna to wanna to do is that happens twice to let you know what the sequence is. So what we do is then we call out, let's say I'm covering one, and I'm the first one. I say one, right? Then the next person says two, then the next person says three. That lets everybody know the order in which they're supposed to shoot it. And also then you can kind of get an indication of, okay, if I completely forget which mine is, I know after this guy that I just heard does his, that I need to shoot mine next, right? That's an easy way to remember it. So it's gonna do that twice. Each time you wanna call it out, because maybe the first time when you were calling it out, someone missed a call out, right? So you wanna go ahead and do that, and then you get to the third one, that's when you actually do it. So when you do that, you're gonna say one down, then the next person says two down, the next person says three down. Don't call out what your position is, call the order, because that lets the next person, I, let's say I'm two, I know once a person with first one does, shoots it and he gets it, I need to do my next. The reason is, is if you do them out of order, you're gonna get that ritual of negation for the entire fire team. And if you get that, that means you could potentially wipe. Now, if that does ever happen to you, what you need to do is you need to go down to that center area. Don't jump in Im immediately because once someone does that, it has a timer before it comes up again. So what you wanna do is all get close to that center area, not completely in it, then big countdown and everyone jump at the same time and that way you can get the debuff. But again, if you do follow this guide, that shouldn't be an issue. So again, you do it for the three, then you're gonna do that for four, then five, six, and seven. So it's five ways up to seven. Once you get to seven, obviously, at that point, that's more oracles, that's all the oracles, but that's more oracles than our people. So you're definitely gonna have to have one person or multiple people cover more than one at that point. So again, that's why this isn't an encounter where you can kind of sit back and not do a job. You do have to do a job. While you're doing that, again, keep in mind, they're gonna be snipers out, so either take them out or just make sure you have cover where they're not gonna hit you. Once you complete that fifth wave, that the encounter ends and you move on to the next encounter. It's important to kind of get this oracle concept because it will come back later in the raid. Templar is a really simple encounter, but sometimes because of DPS, it, it can be something people struggle with. But let me tell you kind of the quick, easiest way to do this. For Templar, you're going to have the same concept. You're going to have three oracles that show up. So for that, just pick a couple people, one person on left, one person on right, to kind of make sure, one person can even cover all of them potentially if they're really good. But again, those people are just going to go out and shoot the oracles. There's going to be ads that show up, and there's going to be a relic that shows up in the middle. The person is going to be the relic runner, who should be your person who's probably the most mobile, who can jump around pretty easily. That person is going to pick up that relic. When you're killing ads at the very beginning, leave some ads up because the relic holder is going to kill the ads to basically bring up his super on the relic. The relic super is what you use to pop the shields up the Templar, which stuns him and allows you to do DPS. So again, people are going to go out, they're going to shoot their oracles. The rest of the fire team is going to congregate in the back, right, where you came in and the relic person is going to kind of go around and shoot. Now, for me, I kind of line up on the left side. There's a pillar there where I go before I shoot it. I'll tell the, I'll count down to that three, two, one, get ready to shoot. That'll let the team know to kind of get, and we kind of, people either go on the stairs or they go in the ledge right where the Templar is situated. We'll shoot the shield. Someone will usually drop a well. Sometimes we use bubble, and that's when you start doing damage. For damage, damage varies. I generally wouldn't use rocket launchers unless you're sitting on the stairs. But generally, some people use double shotguns. That works really well because you can swap between them. Some people will use like linears and wither horde and things like that. So again, use whatever you want to do. Uh, the, the actual person with the relic then is going to be looking for the next place that the Templar is going to warp to. You'll see it because there'll be a red ring around it. Your job is to very quickly get to that next area and block the Templar's teleport. That will allow the Templar to stay in place and actually you'll then be able to do extended DPS to him. So you're going to want to do that if you want to take him out. Now, for the person running relic, you can get encased inside of a bubble. If that happens, make sure to call out your, your teammates to shoot you out because you won't be able to get out. 
because that will stop you from getting to that plate. So once you're on that plate, you just stand there, same thing. Your job again is to look to see where the next plate is that you're gonna go. The rest of your team is going to be doing DPS. Now for the relic holder, if you wanna drop it for a quick second to maybe do a super add him, again, something where you can immediately pick back up, you know, something like Nova or something where you can immediately pick back up the relic because you don't wanna lose the relic. If you do, you can wipe the fire team. So, you know, do that, continue to do damage, and that's really encounter. If you do take too long, there's a chance you have another set of oracles come up. You can send someone out to do those if you want to. Generally though, if you're doing enough DPS, you shouldn't have to worry about that. The next full encounter is Gatekeeper, and this is in the same room as the final boss. For this encounter, you will see that there are plates on the right and left. You will need two people on the right and two people on the left. One person that picks up the relic that we'll talk about and a floater. The other thing you'll notice is that there's a Gatekeeper in the middle. That gatekeeper you will actually kill once you're ready to start the encounter, and that's what drops the relic and gets the rest of the activities going. Again, there are two portals, one right, one left, that you need to step on and clear ads off and keep those plates clear to open up portals to go to Mars and Venus. This can be tricky for some fire teams. How I remember this is that Mars is a four-letter word, just like left. So the Mars plate is on the left. Venus is a five-letter word, just like, just like right. So that's the right plate. And the thing is, if you remember one of these, you could do a trick where I always know that Mars is left, then you know Venus is gonna be the opposite one. So again, do whatever it works for your fire team, but it's very important to know, uh, to know Mars versus Venus because yes, right and left are great to call out when you're outside. When you're in the portals themselves, you're gonna have no context of what the main room is. So understanding what the, what the areas look like and be able to call it out is very important for this encounter and for the next encounter. So for the two plates, there'll be one person on each of those teams that will stay on the plates no matter what. And the key is they're killing ads. They definitely wanna keep the Minotaurs off because they will block the, the portal, which will prevent you from going into the uh, Mars or Venus. Their other job is going to be helping out the gatekeeper that spawns in the middle during the middle of the encounter. So to start the counter, you kill the gatekeeper and you take his relic. So again, there's a relic person that does that. The plate people defend their plates. And one tip is you ha have the ads under control. You can't stand on the rock above the plate if you're struggling. You just need to keep in mind that you want to keep the minotaurs off the plates. On right and left, the other two people who started will then go into Mars and Venus to look for shielded enemies. They'll have a bunch of enemies that show up. One side at some point is going to see a shielded enemy. Whoever sees that shielded enemy is going to make a call out of Mars and Venus because that allows the relic person to know which portal they need to go through. Once the relic person goes through the portal, they're gonna have a timer that will not allow them to enter another portal with a relic until it counts down. So because of this, the person in the room with the relic holder has to pick it up. So basically you have the person come in with the relic, they kill the shielded enemy because they're the only ones who can, they drop the relic. The person who was in that room before picks up the relic and takes it out of the room again. And the person who had the relic originally stays in the room and kills ads. One of the reasons this is gonna get complicated too is because when this happens, another shielded enemy is gonna show up in the opposite room. And so you're gonna to have to do some rotations to get that relic over to that other room. The people who are in the main room at that point are going or make sure they kill the gatekeeper that spawns in the middle, floating island. Because when that happens, when that person that gatekeeper comes up, the people in the portal, even if you've cleared out the plates, they won't be able to exit the room. So timing is really important on that. But again, if you time your runs pretty quickly, that gatekeeper's not become an issue. So again, the trick here is once you leave the room in relic, you drop it on the floor and the floater picks it up. What we do, and you could do something differently, we just have the floater ready at the plate that we know the relic holder is coming out of so he can pick it up. He immediately goes into the other portal. He takes the relic in, same thing, kills a shielded enemy, drops it, the person who was in that room, picks up the relic and takes it back out. Again, for the people who are in the rooms, you can get some pretty beefy wyverns and other enemies that come out. So, you know, use whatever you're comfortable with with taking those out. So rocket launchers work pretty well. If you really get stuck, stasis on a warlock is really, really good in this room. Wither horde. But again, just things that like you add clear and burst damage. You can do burst supers too, because you're not going to need those for boss DPS. There's no boss in this encounter. Once you complete several rounds of this, you're going to see a thing that shows up that says a new conflux appears before the crystal throne. At that point, everyone goes back out of the portals, goes to the center of the main room. There'll be a bunch of ads and wyverns that show up, kill everything, you finish the encounter, and then you're on to Atheon. Atheon will spawn in the center of the room. So again, don't stay there. At the beginning, waves of ads will show up, including sky harpies. The trick of the sky harpies is make sure you take down as many as you can and leave one up. That will prevent a new wave 
to spawn up and they can really kind of screw you up. So that's an important thing to do. At some point during the ad clears, Atheon will put a message that says, Atheon opens the time streams. This is a warning that part of the fire team will be teleported away. This is why you don't have to worry about splitting in the fire teams. You will have to be able to read a sequence of oracles if you stay in the main room. So people who want that role, I typically try to get in the middle back of the room on top of the cliffs so I can read better. But keep in mind, Atheon will be firing at you during that point. You will then see Atheon sends for the supplicants and three people from that team will be randomly sent to either Mars or Venus. Once you get to that room, you'll want one person to pick up the relic and head towards the back of the room. For the people who don't have the relic, try to throw grenades and help the relic keeper clear the ads in the middle island on the way to the back. Keep going and turn around once you get back there. The relic holder is going to want to cleanse the fire team immediately because they're getting that effect that makes them blind. So they will be able to shoot the oracles. In the main room, while you have one person reading the oracles, you're going to have the other two people hold a plate of the room that people said that they had gotten warped to, whether it was Mars or Venus. You're going to want to kill ads during this phase. And keep in mind, once you take the plate, since it's not Minotaurs, you can actually stand on the rock uh, to help you protect yourself because there will be a lot of ads that you have to take out that can really mess you up. And there's also supplicants that can explode on you. Also, while you're doing this for the people clearing ads, make sure you try to use longer range weapons to take out some of the ads on the other side because while they won't immediately mess you up, they will later when you try to do this again and they could come over to the side. So try where you can to take those out. Again, one person normally on the ledge in the middle reads the oracles. The oracles have to be shot in a specific order on the other side, so it's important you get these callouts correctly. To read the oracles, we go left to right and then front to back. It will take some practice, but those three callouts are left front, left back, mid front, mid back, mid right front, right back. It can only be three of these six choices each time. If there's only three of them, so in other words, if there's one that's front, mid, and right, but you don't care about the, the back or anything, I just call front, mid, right. Because that way, you know, you don't have to worry about the other team trying to decipher what location adds less words for people to get confused about. Also, if the group is struggling, I will just call out the first two. That way the team will automatically know that which one is third, because there's three that show up. You're trying to send the order. If you call the first two, then they know the last one is the third one, and that makes it for LFG, better for LFG groups. Once you call out the last of three Oracle sets, you head to the plate where the team will come out, in other words, the one you've been clearing, on the stairs to set for DPS. And it'll take them a little bit to come out, so you have a well, go ahead and put that down. And again, once you see the timer for the boss, you can start doing DPS before that team comes back. In either Mars or Venus, what you get, when you get to the back, you'll have to shoot Oracles. The two people with the Relic Holder need to have medium to long range weapons to take out the Oracles. You can use Xeno, but that's overkill. A good sniper, fast scout will work out pretty well, because you're going to be helping each other. Since you're a mirror of the other room, but went to the back, you will see the oracles on the same side as in the main room. So if he says front right, and there are two on the right, shoot the front one first. If there's only one on the right, you know that's the right one. Again, not mixing up the oracles takes some, some reps, basically, because you have to kind of get a feel for where they show up. The relic holder will continue to cleanse, for which that keeps you from going blind, but it also protects you from enemies who are in the middle area who are trying to shoot you. When the team starts doing the third oracle sequence for the relic holder, go ahead and cleanse them and run to the plate. What this is going to allow you to do is speed up getting back to DPS. Because what you're going to do is you're going to wait at the plate, they're going to come, you're going to immediately cleanse them, and you're all going to run through and do DPS at that point. Cleanse them one last time and go through. Now you all do DPS. For the relic holder, you can drop it if you want to use a super or something real quick, but you need to pick it back up or someone has to pick it back up because that, that will prevent the, the team from wiping. We typically try to have one of the well warlocks do that because then we don't lose DPS. Also, once you have a super on the relic, this is for the relic holder, make sure you shoot at Atheon because it will stun him and extend your DPS phase. At around 50 seconds, you're going to see a counter that says imminent detain with a five second timer. Basically what that does is if you remember that bubble from when people were the relic holder earlier, if you get that and you're staying near everyone, everyone will get that bubble and it could wipe the fire team. So as soon as you see that run away from the fire team, and just when you're done, let them know to shoot you out. That will prevent you from messing up the entire fire team. Once the counter finishes, then you're done with DPS. You just do this as many times as possible. Again, keeping in mind there is, there is a, you, if you do it too many times, there is an arranged mechanic that will wipe you. So you do have a limit. But again, if you get good at this, if you get practice, you're going to get through this encounter within probably one or two times pretty easily. That's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it again. Let me know, and if you did, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and I would love to make more videos, so the more feedback you give me, the more videos like this I'm going to make, and I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.